Foster grew up in rural Kansas with what would become a lifelong fascination with the West and cowboys. He went to Colorado and filed a homestead claim in 1905. After five years of that lonely existence, he returned to McCracken, Kansas, opened a general store, and married. But Chester still longed for the cowboy life and needed money to go into ranching. He became a traveling salesman for a Salina-based manufacturer of work clothes. His success in selling Henry Lee's garments actually led to the evolution of how the West was outfitted, and he became chairman of H.D. Lee Company's board. His success quashed his personal return to the cowboy life, but not his quest to, in his own words, pay tribute to the real builders of the West. It was Chester Arthur Reynolds who, beginning in 1953, literally wrangled leaders and politicians of 17 Western states to establish a Cowboy Hall of Fame. A 37-acre site on Persimmon Hill in central Oklahoma was chosen, ground was broken, and construction started on what many called a national shrine. Hall of Fame inductee John Wayne led the parade for the hall's opening day, June 26, 1965. The dedication and grand opening, where the American flag and flags of the 17 states were raised, were attended by thousands, but not by the man who had the vision. Chester Reynolds did see ground broken for the Cowboy Hall in January of 1958, but he died later that year, about seven and a half years before his dream was realized. I'm Billy Roadley with Centennial Stories.